Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Laura Trump Wanted for Questioning. Let's see what kind of questions you got today. First question, what was the first presidential election you participated in and who did you vote for? Or in other words, for whom did you vote? But that's okay. We won't go there. I won't get crazy with the English because I really do sometimes. Um, The first election that I voted, where I voted, I'm assuming you're talking about, I'm pretty sure it must have been the 2000 election, right? That would have been... who. Who was running in 2000? I voted for George Bush, right? Did I vote in that one? Hold on. How old was I? Stand by. Let me do some math. Yes, I had just turned 18. I voted for George Bush. There you go. There's your answer. Um, Took took me a second. There have been a few between now and then. I mean, I'm really not uh, many years older than 18. Just kidding. Um, It's been a minute, so I have to think about that. But that was was correct. Okay. Next question. I am a somewhat recent ex-Democrat. Congratulations for making that decision. Your father-in-law woke me up to how problematic liberalism is. My question is how do you think we can get other Americans to open their eyes as well? And really it's about seeing it one time. And then once you see it, you can't unsee it. You can't go back. Once you were awake, you never go back to sleep. Um, I think the problem is that people are being given bad information and it really is all hinging on where people get their news and where they get their information day to day. I mean, you look at a younger generation, where are they getting their information? Honestly, a lot of them are getting it from like TikTok and that's terrifying. But we also have to keep that in mind as we go towards this election in 2024. We've got to be reaching out. We've got to be firing on all cylinders here. We have to make sure that we're going to people wherever they're getting their information. Now with the mainstream media, I mean, I hate to say it, but it's it's sort of a lost cause at this point because we know that there really are mostly liberal outlets out there that reach the the vast majority of people. If you look at the the people across the country who don't get cable TV, and that's a a large majority of the country, they're getting their news from the daily news at uh, evening news, like 6 p.m., local news at 11 p.m. maybe. And we all know that they have a typically left-leaning bias to them. So you're not getting the full picture as to what's going on. I think we have to start being a little more creative as conservatives and and not be afraid to reach out to people on unfamiliar outlets in an unfamiliar territory because that's really going to be the difference as far as I'm concerned. Now, I think it has probably helped to have a completely inept president in the White House and a group of people who seems basically hellbent on destroying this country because people can't help but look around and say like, what is going on? Why do things feel like they're so bad? Why does it seem like so much is out of control? Is this even the same country we are living in right now that we have had, you know, for 250 years? And to a lot of people that are like, it really doesn't, it's kind of scary. So I think that is helpful in waking people up, but certainly I think the answer is going to be that we've got to go out there and we have to give people the real information and we have to attack it from positions that probably are relatively uncomfortable for us traditionally as conservatives, but I'm ready to go. I hope you guys are too. It's going to be a team effort. So let's do it as we head to 2024. And again, welcome to the Republican party. Okay. Next question. Hey, honey, at what point did you fully embrace joining a two big crime family? Oh, two part question. So, sorry, let me start over. Hey, honey, at what point did you fully embrace A, joining a two big crime family and B, looking mannish as a preference? Well, let me say this. Let me address point B real quick. There's nothing mannish about me. Um, you could check out my chromosomes if you need to prove that just for starters and I'm sorry that you probably are an individual who I doubt you have ever been athletically inclined in your whole life. I happen to be pretty good at playing a whole lot of sports. I have my whole life and there's nothing I like more than a great workout. It makes me feel good. And I say, whatever makes you feel good out there, if you're not hurting anyone else by doing it, you do it. You go chase your dream, you go chase your goals and you do what makes you happy. It makes me happy 
to work out and to feel good. And I guarantee you, if the two of us were in a bathing suit next to each other, people are voting for me all day long. I don't need to even see you and what you look like. But to answer your first question, a two big crime family, what, what crimes have we committed? Exactly. Did we get a bunch of money from foreign governments, from Russia, from China, from Ukraine, um, as it relates to my father-in-law's position in government? Oh, wait, no, that was the Biden family who did that. My family actually stopped doing any international deals when my father-in-law got elected to become president of the United States because we didn't even want the faintest hint of impropriety, much different than Joe Biden and his entire family. And I would love to know what crimes anyone actually thinks that have been committed. Do you really think with the constant, almost seven year now investigations into one man, into Donald Trump and his company that has been around for decades, if there was even one single T that wasn't crossed or I that wasn't dotted, we wouldn't know about it right now? Are you kidding me? No crimes committed in this family. You might want to take a look at the Bidens and the Clintons for some crimes, but you probably already knew that. I'll see you at the gym. Next question. Oh, what's your connection to Paula? I love her recipes. Paula Dean is who I'm sure you're referencing. I had quite a what did, Thursday last week. Paula Dean came to my house, cooked in my kitchen with me. Um, I can't even tell you how much I have loved Paula Dean for so long. When I first moved to New York and I was so homesick, if I turned on the Food Network and Paula Dean was on cooking, I was just there. Even if I had it on in the background, she made me feel like I was home because she reminds me so much of people who I grew up around, uh, women in my neighborhood, my aunts, family, friends, her whole demeanor, her voice, the whole thing. And she's even better in person. I'm just gonna tell you guys right now, even better. Um, it just so happened that there's a great charity that uh, raised money for Wounded Warriors. It's not the Wounded Warriors Foundation, um, but essentially they would build homes for veterans who had some sort of limb amputation or some sort of a traumatic injury that required them to have a special home. Um, they raised money and they build them homes. And so my husband and I happened to be auction items for this particular charity for an event they had, I think back in November. And the auction item was dinner at our house and Paula Dean would come do the cooking. We raised, I think somewhere in the neighborhood of $400,000 for this event. And it built an entire home for a wounded veteran. So, I mean, it was a win all around as far as I'm concerned. Um, and we had a great time and we cooked some delicious food and she's even better, like I said, in person. If you can ever get around Paula Dean, highly recommend it. Thank you for the question. <clears throat> Next question. What about the idea of both Tucker Carlson and Don Lemon interviewing President Donald Trump at the same time? Wow, this is quite a setup, I, I love this. Even though Mr. President called out Don Lemon, I feel it will be good to face each other. I mean, I think we all know that my father-in-law has never backed down from a challenge. He never turns away any questions. Don't forget about the days when he used to go out on the way to Marine One, walk out of the White House, and there was the whole gaggle of press out there, and he would just stop and point at him and go and go and go. And how many times did we see him in front of that White House podium uh, there in the press office there with the entire group of press taking questions. There was nothing off limits. I mean, I think he may say yes to it. Now, the real question is, I, I would love to know who's going to set some sort of an event up like this. Um, I might be able to get Tucker on board. I don't have, I know this will be a shocker, don't have Don Lemon's number. Um, he could shoot me like a DM on Instagram or something and maybe we could get this going. Uh, but that may be our, our only downfall here. So stay tuned. I, I never say never. Um, but yeah, that would be that would be one to tune into for, for sure. Okay. Next question. Hi, Laura. I'm a Simpsons fan. Oh, so my question is what Simpsons character best represents you and your family? Don't forget about your father-in-law. 
my God, it's been so long since I've watched The Simpsons. Here's what I do remember about The Simpsons. Haven't they predicted like every major political event in, in like the past decade or so? I, they predicted my father-in-law's election. They predicted a lot of crazy stuff. So I don't know what's going on over there with the writers at The Simpsons. And, and to answer this question, I'm going to have to do an I'll get back to you. As some of you may know, I don't get these questions in advance. I get them right now in my hot little hands. As as I'm, I'm telling them to you, I'm getting them. So I obviously haven't prepared for this. I have to go back and watch. And I'm trying to think of, of anyone who might, in some sort of a cartoon, represent my father-in-law. I'll tell you what cartoon my husband and I really love watching, not that this is representative of, it, of anyone in my family, is Family Guy. It's a good one. If you just need a couple of minutes of like zoning out and you really need to laugh, which God bless us all, don't we all just need to laugh sometimes? Otherwise, we just may burst into tears because everything is so ridiculous. Um, family Guy, that's how I'm going. Let me get back to you on the Simpsons character, though. I'm sorry I'm not more uh, up to date on my, my Simpsons characters. Uh, I'll check on it and I'll get back. Okay. Next question, what was the best, oh, what was the best Halloween costume you ever wore? I love that we're doing this in May. Uh, God, now I feel like I need to start thinking about Halloween costumes because you know it sneaks up on you. My kids are ready. They tell me like every, once every two weeks what their Halloween costume will be and it's generally always different. So this is why I can't take them seriously on just about anything um, until we actually get right up to the event. Now, if they told me they were in the wrong gender, obviously we would start to transition. I'm just kidding. That's how stupid all of this stuff is. All right, um, Halloween costume, I, probably the one that won me an award. I'm gonna say I was third grade, fourth grade, and my mom made it a Betty Boop costume. This is going way back. I don't even know if the Betty Boop cartoon was still on when I was a kid. Um, most people today probably don't even know what that is, but she made me the whole sequined outfit with it was almost like a flapper skirt. I had fishnet stockings on. I got to wear some like little heels, which for me was everything back in the day. And I won the costume party at Wrightsville Beach Elementary School. So shout out to my mom. Thanks for making that. My mom also that year, I don't know what she was doing. She was busy. Made my brother a full uh, body Bugs Bunny costume and like used my dad's socks for the feet. It was a whole thing. Um, I have not made my kids any Halloween costumes, but I don't want to say stay tuned because I don't know if I really will. Anyway, thank you. Okay. What is your favorite streaming series you have binged maybe during the pandemic year? All right, so I love history and I love anything that, I mean, when I, if I'm reading a book, it's gotta be nonfiction. I love historical, you know, biographies of people and historical documentaries of some variety. So now there was history based in this series, but there were some um, creative liberties, shall we say, I'm sure taken for entertainment value, but I loved the Tudors. I, I thought it was fantastic. It was about King Henry VIII, who famously had quite a few wives and some of them didn't make it and were beheaded. Anne Boleyn, you may remember. Um, it's, it was, a, it was a, an easy to watch series. I felt like there was some history involved in it. And I watched that one actually when I was pregnant with my son, Luke. And um, turns out after you have these kids, you don't have a whole lot of time for binging any series anymore. So when, when you say binge, I mean, I haven't binged anything since my, my pre-child days, but uh, check back in with me in about 10 years or so. Maybe I'll, I'll be back on that train. We'll see. Okay. Final question. Are you following the NBA playoffs and do you have a pick of who will win the finals? I, I'm a football girl. I know. I'm the worst. Um, our friends invited us down to Miami to a heat game and I would love to go down. Maybe we're gonna make it down there. Are they still playing? I don't know, this is how sad it is. But now you ask me about football, ask me about especially college football, I'll tell you all you need to know about it. NBA, I haven't been following. And truthfully, if you haven't noticed lately, we've, we've had a little bit going on in our family. I feel like I've been very busy and I haven't had time for a whole lot. So um, again, maybe maybe down the road. I'll pick up a couple more sports to uh, get involved with. Right now, I don't really know. I'm I'm 
I'm hoping it's it's any team that isn't woke, quite frankly, and we'll stay right there with that one. All right, that'll do it uh, for this episode of Lara Trump Wanted for Questioning. Thank you so much. Make sure you like, share, follow, subscribe. Leave us your questions here. Go to therightview.com right there and leave us your questions. Oh, we didn't even have the right one on. Uh, therightview.com, leave us your questions, Facebook, all over the place. We want to answer them. And until next time, we'll see you back here for more of Lara Trump Wanted for Questioning. At The Right View, uh, we're very proud of the fact that we are independent. We get to say everything that we think and everything that we feel. We have no woke companies guiding us or telling us what we can and cannot say. We are always going to shoot you straight and give you the facts as we know them. And that's why it's important to support independent uh, outlets like The Right View. My name is Lara Trump, and I think Mike Lindell is a patriot. He is someone who loves this country, is willing to fight for this country. Um, I love my pillow because not only are my pillows made in the USA by American workers, uh, but they're great products and they're so great that not only do I use them in my own bed at night, my children actually requested my daughter the other day went to the closet and pulled out a my pillow and said this is the pillow that i want to sleep with and i gotta tell you she loves it and will have nothing to do with any other pillow so it's a big hit around our house my dogs also uh happen to sleep on my pillow dog beds so all around the trump household we're big fans if you go to mypillow.com today and use promo code trump again promo code trump you will not only save money, but you will help us continue this show and other shows like it and help us continue the fight for the future of America. Inflation has impacted all of our lives. I don't think anyone can go to the gas pump or the grocery store without noticing that it is a major factor. And unfortunately, it's not going anywhere. It doesn't seem like it's going down in the way that we would like it to. And one way to protect your money is by investing in precious metals, uh, gold and silver. That's always been a great way to make sure that you keep your money and you keep it safe. When you go to bh-pm.com, use promo code TRUMP. That way, if you decide you want to invest in gold and silver, you'll save yourself a little bit of money. We live in a time that's very interesting. A lot of us out there feel like a lot of our rights are slipping away. And if you're like I am and you want to have the right to choose whether or not to have a vaccine, how to live your life freely, and you're looking for a great doctor, I've heard amazing things about Dr. Sherwood. He's somebody who you should really check out and check into, um, and it'll help support this program and keep us going. So go to Sherwood.tv and use promo code Trump. Again, Sherwood.tv and use promo code Trump. You can save yourself some money and help us keep our program going. So I'm like a lot of people. I love to wear an Apple Watch, but I hate how it looks. And I scoured the internet to search for the best looking Apple Watch cases I could find, and I found it. Goldandcherry.com. They have absolutely beautiful watches, as you can see here. Everything is waterproof. Everything looks good with different outfits. You can get sporty, you can get fancy, but they are great quality, uh, made out of Delaware in the United States of America. And they have been kind enough to give me a promo code that I can share with you if you wanna get your hands on one of these as well. It's Lara T, L-A-R-A-T is the promo code to get yourself a discount at goldandcherry.com. And not only do they make Apple Watch cases, they also make great products for iPads and iPhones, keyboards, your desktop, everything you could possibly need, goldandcherry.com. Use promo code LARAT so you can get yourself one of these today too.